Hi, I'm Christelle Tomlinson, and welcome back to my YouTube page for another in the Good Guest Mondays series. As you know, I dedicate time at the top of every week to help nourish you with energizing thoughts. Anywhere in your life that you feel like you might be running on E, whether it is spiritually, emotionally, financially, in your relationships, productively, there is a video right here on our YouTube page inside our YouTube Good Guest Mondays community that can help to serve you and refuel the tank if it feels like you're running on E. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 tools that you need if you're going to make 2023 a successful year. 10 tools that you need if you are going to make 2023 a successful year. So pause for a second. Literally, you can pause the video. Grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, because I need you to be taking notes on these tools, why they are important, how to use them to put yourself in the best possible position to maximize 2023. We are not moving into the new year with an intention to fail, with an intention to flop, with an intention to plan and not execute. Those days are over. If that was your modus operandi for 2022, we're going to shift gears and move into a new direction and a new level of operating. Our lives require us to show up and put both hands on the wheel and stop looking around at the end of a year wondering how you got to where you got to. You are the driver. You are making those left turns. You are making those right turns. You're choosing to pull over and stop. You're choosing when to press gas down a particular avenue. You're choosing whether or not you have the right resources and tools to be moving along a particular terrain. You have the wheel in your hands. And if you're trying to move into the direction of your goal without a map, it means you're committing to getting lost. And if you don't know how to refuel your tank when it is on E, it means that you are planning to get stuck and stalled on the road. If you're not giving yourself the tools to change a tire, to, to put some water um, in the engine or some kind of lubricating fluid inside your vehicle so it can work at its operational best, you're choosing not to make it to the end. If that was how you were dealing with 2022 and every year before that, you have an opportunity right now to start over. So this, this conversation is for people who are looking to start over. Start over because where you find yourself now is not where you want to stay. It's not where you feel like you belong. What you have in front of you is not what you believe you will always have. Something tells you that there is more for you to manifest, to create, to access, and to stand in. Your garden could flourish a little bit more. So you're prepared to start over, to plant a different crop, to water it in a different way, to apply new discipline, and to get a better harvest at the end of the new year. You are ready to start over. Maybe because you were looking at a particular investment, whether a relationship, a business, a financial investment, and it has gone bust. You have lost everything. You've lost your house, your car, your job, your income, your self-confidence. If that sounds like you, stay with me because that's exactly where I was in 2020. And I was able to level up in less than two and a half years with these 10 tools that I'm going to share with you. It doesn't matter where you are and what you've lost, why you are starting over. You could be starting over because at this moment, you feel hopeless and uninspired. And you feel like this is a point on your journey to pivot. You're feeling hopeless about your circumstances. You're feeling uninspired and a little uncertain about how to start. These 10 tools can help give you some clarity and make you feel a little bit more hopeful of, of what you have the capacity and the potential to do. You could be starting over because you're grieving the loss of a relationship and the loss of that relationship has stalled you mentally and emotionally. So much of your identity and the hopes and dreams you had for yourself were married into that relationship. And so losing that, you've lost almost half, if not three quarters or the whole of you. And that's a very real sensation, not knowing who you are anymore, not knowing where you are anymore, not knowing if you're wise enough to make good decisions anymore. And that loss of the relationship, it could be an intimate relationship. It could be a relationship with your parents, with your sibling, with a very, very good friend, depending on how deeply connected you both were. You could really be struggling to find yourself and your own compass without that person. 
You could be starting over because you want to start a new business. There's an idea in your spirit. There's an intention about something you could create and bring to this world and make profit from and serve in terms of creating a generational base for your family. And you want a strategy to start it and start it well. You could be starting over because the last business failed and now you're too scared to try again. So that start over feels a lot scarier than when the first start uh, had occurred because now you tried and you've proven that some things you don't know and you're wondering if this is something that's for you. But the feeling, the intention, the passion around it is still there. You could be starting over because you lost your job and you need to retool, reskill and reapply for a new job. You could be starting over because you are simply on your own now. There is no more vacative, as we call it in my country, Jamaica. There is nobody behind you to, to be the wind beneath your wings anymore. You are at a stage in your life where you are on your own. You are officially adulting. All the decisions start and stop with you. The budget has to be fully financed by you. The lights stay on based on what you do. The rent gets paid. Food goes on that plate at the dinner table based on what you do. And so you're starting fresh this journey of taking ownership of your life and making good decisions for yourself. And that can feel scary. So we could be starting over because of many things. On my own journey, and I'll share a little bit with you before we get into those 10 tools. And remember, get your paper and your pen because we're going to write these things down. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to apply these tools, put them into practice and get the results that I got over the last year and a half when I was moving from my ground zero to my next level where I'm at now. So in 2020, if you follow me on any of my social media platforms, you would know that I had entered the political landscape in Jamaica and run as the youngest a candidate in the 2020 general elections but a lot of my my life and work was centered around politics not just the parliamentary elections but even the job i held um in terms of managing communications for the party my 95 job was nestled inside the politics everything that i was doing was pouring into and out of the politics and so it was very high stakes whether we won or lost because a loss meant losing all the funding that supported all the work that you were getting paid to do. So my business interests, my professional interests, my future plans, all of those things locked into politics. We lost the election. I did not win my seat. And a lot of other things became unhinged coming out of that loss. So I was fully destabilized in the professional capacity, especially around income. So election lost, uh, job lost, Income was also lost. But in that same year before the year could end, I also lost my relationship. A five-year-long relationship came to an end at the end of 2020, heading into 2021, um, came to an end. Now, with that, I am the kind of person who, when things come to an end, I officially accept that it's at an end and I start thinking about the start over, right? And that start over meant new house. So for a while, because I had moved out of that shared dwelling, I went overseas to my mother because I needed some time now, literally going back in home with mommy, needed some time to restabilize myself financially. Because remember, I told you job lost, income lost. And I also have a toddler with me who I have here um, over and full, and full responsibility of in terms of her physically being with me. So while I don't thankfully have the challenge of all of the responsibilities being mine to bear, certainly her physical presence in my life and providing a roof over her head. Um, at that point, it was fully my responsibility because I had opted to leave um, the, the shared dwelling. So no home, no job, no income. And it's me and my, at the time, my two-year-old. But that's not the only thing I lost. Before I left Jamaica, I lost my car. A very scary life-altering and life-threatening car crash and my car was written off. So I was without a car, without a home, without a job, without an income, without a relationship, without the profession that I was thinking to shift gears fully into. Everything lost. So when I tell you I was at ground zero, I was at ground zero. Now, thankfully, most of you can be at ground zero and all your friends and family know I didn't have that privilege. I was at ground zero and everybody could see, everybody could tell, everybody knew because much of those 
uh, things were in the public space. I mean, you don't lose a general election privately. You don't lose a job related to um, that kind of uh, process and profession privately. And the relationship that I was in at the time was with somebody that was very renowned and well-known. So that too is not something that happens in private, like people notice and people know. So all of those things are happening and you don't have the cover of privacy. But I had to deal with it. Right. And at ground zero, but one of the things I decided very, very early in the process is I'm going to start over. I saw what was at ground zero and I didn't like it. It was not for me. Didn't feel comfortable, didn't feel familiar. And I was not here to stay. And so the first thing I used as a tool was my ability to make a decision. I decided that I was done with ground zero. If any of us is to move from where we are, wherever that ground zero is, into the next level, into the next thing, into the next space, higher up, you have to decide that you're done with this. And unfortunately, some of us are at ground zero and still wanting things to happen for us at ground zero. You don't want to move. You don't want to release certain relationships. You don't want to release certain habits. You don't want to release certain mental frameworks and ways of thinking. You want to stay doing the same things that brought you to ground zero. And then tell yourself you have an intention to level up and to move. You have to decide that you're done with this. You have to decide that if it means leaving things behind that felt comfortable, leaving behind even the things that you earned and worked for, because they are not sufficient to take you to the next level, because they're keeping you wedded and grounded at ground zero, making no progress, stagnating, collecting moss, right? Because that is where it is keeping you, you are done. You have to be done with the people pleasing because some people are pleased to see you at ground zero. You have to be done with what people have you in, in, in their eyes to be or what your life means to other people. The need to impress them, the need to prove on them. You have to be done with that, that battle of trying to win over people's opinions and make them think the right thing of you. You have to be okay. Not, not having the ability to control people's mind and their thinking about you. You have to be done with people's comments, deciding whether or not you move or stay stuck. You have to be done wanting to blame other people for where you are, holding them in your heart hostage, needing for them to do something right so you can be released, needing them to say sorry, need them to change your behavior, need them to change your approach, need them to recognize how special and awesome you are and come around and help you to nourish this dream, need them to approve the work that you're doing, need them to see you, need them to love you, the need you have for other people, you have to be done with it because moving from ground zero to your next level, the first couple of steps, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to have to do it alone. And that's because those first couple of steps are emotional and mental steps. Nobody can do it for you. You can watch some people who inspire you. You can have people around you who are praying for you. But the real mental battle and that very first step of taking yourself up and your life into your own hands, you have to do that for yourself. So you have to be done with a lot of the things that prevent you from taking that first step. So my question to you is, before we get into the other tools and tangible work, are you done with where you are? Because if you're not done with this life that is unsatisfying or dissatisfying, if you're not done with this life that does not fulfill your needs, if you're not done with this relationship, if you're not done with this job, if you're not done with living below your potential, if you're not done with these friendships and connections that break you before they build you, if you are not done, you can't level up. So my question is, are you done? Are you done? If where you are doesn't feel like where you want to be, where your best self is going to come to life, you have to be done with it. But until you are done, you will stay there. Until you are done, nothing else that I say to you makes sense. It's just going to be knowledge that you have, but never apply in terms of turning it into wisdom because you're not done with your ground zero. You're not done with your suffering yet. You're not done with your loss. You're not done with your grieving. You're not done with the woe is me. You're not done with the failure. You're still kind of wrapped up in it. And let's be honest, some of us are just not ready. So if you're not ready, maybe you watch this video and you bookmark it. You share it with somebody who you think might be ready so that when you are ready, you can come back to it. Some of us, we have to be honest, we're not ready yet. We know we want to move on, we know we should move, but we're not ready yet. And it's important to be honest about your level of readiness because moving yourself from ground zero to a next level requires readiness. It's not something you can do unless and until you are ready.
spiritually, you have to be done. Emotionally, you have to be done. Every alley has to be done with this level. So if you're at ground zero and you are done, the next thing I want you to consider doing, because that was my first step, is a whole life audit. Your life can be broken down into about eight key life areas. When you look at each of those life areas and your performance and the way you've been, been living your life at least over the last 12 months, what would you say is your success rate? For me, in this last 12 months, my success rate has been 77%. I'm actually able to tell you my precise success rate because I'm able to measure my life. I look at my eight key life areas and I give each of them a grade and I go deep in terms of assessing who participated and contributed to the good or the bad grade, who including myself, you know, but also the networks, the people and the relationships. I grade myself out of 10 every single year. I look at what went right. I look at what did not go right. And I determine for my step, myself what my next best steps are. So the next thing you will have to do after you get ready and serious is to prepare your life audit. Now, it's something that I infused inside my Success Farmer's Guide, which is my annual planner. It's actually the first part of the planner. Before we get into the strategy of the year that we're going to have, first we look at the year that we did have. So we can get honest about who we are, how we're showing up, where the bad habits are, where we are seeing success and growth and need to sustain a particular behavior. Or maybe we need to pause it because things are going well so we can take our focus off of that a little bit and look at the areas we were performing poorly. So I could, I could look at my life at the end of 2020, grade myself and see exactly where I was failing. And then I got honest. I got honest about my own role in co-creating that failure because again, you have to be done blaming other people. You have to be done looking around and seeing whose fault it is and who needs to come over here and tell you sorry. I only to give you back what them take away. No, we're done. Done, 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 done with all of that. And we're ready to take our lives up into our hands. Don't mean that you're not going to hold people accountable for their behavior. But that is not going to be the excuse to stay at ground zero. That's not going to be the reason I don't start moving and leveling up. So you complete your life audit. That's the second thing. The third thing after you've done your life audit now is to set some clear targets and some precise timelines. So I had some very clear targets around my finances. I had clear targets around um, products and, and services that I wanted to create and business expansion for the businesses that I had. I set very, very clear targets and then I had precise timelines. So by January, this needed to happen. By March, this needed to happen. By April, these two things had to happen. But set precise timelines. Those timelines moved from big to very refined. So my vision board, for example, was timeline number one. I knew that these things had to happen in 2021. That's the first timeline. I have 12 months to make these big things happen across the key life areas for myself and for my child. And then after that, I broke it down into what we call a, a battle board or in our planner, it's called an oak strategy. So for the quarter, we break down the goals that we're looking at for three months at a time. So every three months, we sit down and we create some clear targets and some precise timelines. And then after we do that for the quarter now, we work out our monthly intentions and then our weekly essential action plan. And when I say essential action now, you know, we're talking about Targets you have, the timelines you have to meet them. What you do in the middle can't be the busy work. It has to be the essential work only. So we're not going to pick up no waste time behavior like talk to this person. Talk to this person is not a strategic outcome for me. It's not a, an essential action for me. My essential action is to get a yes, is to sign a contract, is to launch this. So, yes, I'm going to have to talk to somebody to get there, but I'm very clear that the goal and the intention is this outcome. So I had weekly essential actions that I had to take to get me to the desired outcome each week, each month, each quarter. That's the third thing, the clear targets and the precise timelines. The fourth thing that I use now, and this went a little bit deeper into the financial goals, was a financial why statement. Now, this one I picked up after reading um, Know Yourself, Know Your Money by Rachel Cruz. She's the daughter of Steve Ramsey. And if you've ever heard of Steve, Steve Ramsey, you know he is like a financial guru. And he comes up with, with these strategies and tactics and tools that help you to reduce debt, grow your net worth, and build financial stability, wealth, and freedom. So I first encountered him through his daughter's book, 
So she shared the, the Ramsey financial system in her book. And one of the things she said we needed was a financial why statement. So I create my financial why statement. And I went a little bit deeper in my why statement than she guided. But I used her prompting as a, a, a moment to create a tool that I knew would help me. So the financial why statement is also something that's included inside the planner. And just to share with you some of the components of it, what is it that you're trying to accomplish for this year in terms of a clear financial goal? When do you want to achieve the clear financial goal? And what you're going to do to celebrate the achievement of that goal? So I laid out three goals, the deadlines, and how I'm going to celebrate when I achieve them. But I went a little bit deeper into it. I identified an accountability partner, which for that year, in fact, since 2020 to now, has been my mother. And then I set a financial accountability or monthly money meeting with my mother. So that has a date and it has a time. I went even deeper on the accountability and I said, mommy, this is how I want you to help me by keeping my money and releasing it to me based on a schedule. So there are two points in the month that I can pull down money from my account. My mother has access to, to my money. My money goes straight into, into her account, um, most of it, right? So she has to approve the movement of the funds. I went even deeper again to use Amazon. I had to use my mother's account which means that her Amazon card, which is linked to it, she has to put money on that Amazon card for me to put anything in that checkout card and, and give Jeff Bezos my money because I had clear financial goals. So that financial why statement, committing to deep accountability with my mother and laying it up so that it was difficult for me and painful if I breached these contracts helped me to move from ground zero in terms of finances. And I mean, millions of dollars in debt. Remember I told you no income. So part of the why statement included creating income. And I was able to wipe that debt out in less than a year, wipe it out completely, and then start generating assets and wealth. So when I said ground zero, guys, believe me, I was there. I was there. <laughs> so the financial why statement helped to keep me focused. You can pause here, take a breath, because I know I've said a lot and we're going to 10 and we're just at number four. But see if you have all that I've listed so far, deciding in your mind that you are done with this, wherever this is for you, completing a life audit to explore your eight key life areas and giving yourself a comprehensive grade about the quality of life that you have, seeing where you have the lowest grade. And then moving to the third step, which is to set clear targets and precise timelines to change what you're seeing in each of those areas. And then four, designing a financial why statement. Again, all of those things are inside our annual planner. Number five for me was a morning routine. So we all know the magic of mastering our mornings, right? If you get your morning right, kind of like a Monday, everything else seems to go on track. You're firing from all cylinders. Once the morning gets started correctly, once you have the right pace, once you have the right outlook, once you have the right mindset, you've engaged yourself in the right conversations, the right things are flowing into your brain. And so the right energy and ideas are coming out of you, a morning routine. And we lay out in the planner too, how you can create the most effective uh, morning routine, the essential elements that should be in every morning routine. And then, wasn't done there, you know, remember we're moving from ground zero, the sixth step was a nighttime routine. So I didn't just throw myself down the bed at the end of the day. I said, whew, ha, huh, hard day. Glad I made it through. No, 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 no. There's a process for unwinding and assessing to make sure that the things I set out to do in each day actually got done. And then to hold myself accountable if it was not done. So where did I drop the ball and how will I pick up that ball tomorrow was essentially how that nighttime routine helped me to process, prepare, and stay productive, even if I did not have the most effective and efficient day. The seventh tool for me is the daily action tracker. So remember, we said we have weekly essential action plans that we're working with. I dig down a little bit deeper again, because every day I get 1,440 minutes. And if I'm not careful, those minutes can be wasted. And at the end of the week, I've wasted thousands of hours and nothing to show for it. So each day, there are five things that I have to get done every single day, depending on what the essential action plan is for the week, the daily um, action tracker reflects that. And so as part of the morning routine or the nighttime routine, I either assess in the morning how many of the five things I got done yesterday, or I assess in the night how many throughout the day I was able to complete. That essential action tracker was built into the planner using 
and emotional intelligent cues and, and brain-based cues so that you want to go back and keep working at it. So coloring is a, is a feature of it. So as you see a flower or a tree filling out for the day, for the week, you want to stay consistent so you can finish coloring and, and completing the work that you set out to do in that week. The eighth strategy, the eighth strategy is around a book list. Now, sometimes you have the vision in your mind. You know exactly what you want to do, why you want to do it. And you will know every single day for 365 days of the year, sometimes. But most of us normal people who have many things competing for our attention, distracting us and pulling us off course, sometimes our brain is not the best place to look for inspiration. Sometimes the thoughts in our head become the self-critic and the negative self-talk and the imposter syndrome. And we kind of have to look outside of ourselves to find new inspiration. And that's how I use my book list. So I have a personal book list that I share um, with my community annually. People join me in the, the reading process. Each month we read a different book and we reflect. So if you'd like to join uh, my book club, and this is a personal book club, you can check the, the um, description below. I'll put a link so you can join. Presently, you're able to join it through the subscriber feature on Instagram, but I've gone ahead to create another feature that allows you, if you're not on Instagram, to still join my personal book club. So you can access my book list for the year. You can also join the book club for our monthly meetings and or mid-month check-ins and coaching around what we're reading in that book so that we can put what we're reading into good use in our life. Now, that book list includes a mix of things around personal development, financial management, some leisurely reading as well, spiritual reading, but essentially it's meant to help you take a look at your whole life and find the best advocates and, and people creating resources through these books that you can pull something from and apply. Every book doesn't have something for everybody. But that's why we read so much. So if you don't find something in one book, across the other 11 books for the year, something can be pulled out and planted. And so far, every book that we've read in my community, everyone who has read it has found something in there for them that is timely for the life work that they're trying to do. The eighth strategy is around an accountability system. Now, I mentioned how the financial accountability process worked with my mother. I had a productive accountability system in my um, friend group. So even now we still have weekly check-ins with each other on a Sunday where we talk to each other around the work we've done, linking the work to the goals that we have for that month. So the fact that you have to come on a call every single Sunday, and share what you've been doing. Hearing other people talk about their consistency and their work. You don't want to sound inconsistent. You don't want to sound unserious. You don't want to sound lazy like you're lumping it out. So you get work done. And I'll tell you, there are some mornings before that 10 o'clock meeting. I wake up two hours earlier because I have to get the work done. I can't go on the call and say, oh, I, I did um five of the 10 things. Oh, I only did 30%. Um, Well, excuse after excuse after excuse. No, I'm not there to waste people's time. So knowing that I'm in a space where people are working towards their goals helps me to stay consistent. Now, I even had an accountability system built into my work. So my professional work through my manager, I encouraged her to help me to pull myself out of the rut I was in and get back to a level of efficiency and productivity. And when I did not meet the targets that we set out, I had to pay her extra money. It cost me to be undisciplined. So accountability can work in different ways. It can come from what we call the Hawthorne effect, which is just sharing to other people what you're planning to do and the need for you to appear consistent in front of those people. You make sure you do it so that nobody says, didn't you say you were going to do that? You're all talk and no work, no action, no outcomes. You don't want to seem inconsistent. You want to seem serious about your life and you want your word to matter in your social groups. So that is a form of accountability, which people do by sharing things at the start of the year online saying, I'm going to start a business this year. this year. I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to finish my degree. And the fact that you put that out there, all these people just heard you say it, it locks you in through that social need we have for approval, acceptance, and to be seen as consistent. Uh, we, we, our brain is wired now to pursue that and get the work done. But it can be more precise. It can be more intimate by creating an accountability system with your friends, with your uh, family members, so they can keep you on track. And then the 10th strategy, 10 tools, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I'm stopping at 10, right? The most important, number 10 now, 
is the periodic performance reviews. I do this at the end of each month. I do it again at the end of a quarter. And as you know, I do it at the end of the year through the life audit and strategy session, which I do with myself. So those are the 10. Deciding, that's a mental tool, deciding that you're done. Without that decision, nothing else is going to matter and nothing else is going to happen. The second is the life audit, assessing your life across all the, the key life areas. And then thirdly, setting clear targets and precise timelines. The fourth, a financial why statement. The fifth, morning routine. The sixth, a nighttime routine. The seventh, a daily action tracker to keep you consistent. Number eight for me, book list so that I can be inspired and I can learn from the work and benefit from the tools that exist out there for me to improve my life in accelerated fashion because I don't have to do everything in order to learn it. Some people have done it and they've learned it and they're teaching it. So let me take that wisdom and apply it in the way that is best suited to my life, my principles and the direction that I'm going in. Accountability, building an accountability, accountability system that makes sense and periodic performance reviews to make sure that over time you're actually seeing the results of the work you are putting in. Because sometimes you can get caught up in the work, 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 work that you actually don't stop to see, well, is this work taking me in the right direction? So looking at the map, pausing to say, oh, I was supposed to be at Northeast, looking where you actually are on that compass and realizing that you need to do a little bit of course correction for next month, for next quarter, or for next year. Now, the last thing I would share with, with you is a scripture that I found was very helpful for me while I was at ground zero and trying to build up the courage and the consistency to get started, to decide that I was done. And it was Jeremiah 29, 11, which says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And saying that even today still tightens up my throat a little bit because it reminded me of how I almost lost my faith. My faith in the creator, in the universe, in, in God and the God essence that is even inside of me. I needed to be reminded of that that I was not put here to fail. I was not put here to live in pain and to struggle and to suffer. I was put here to thrive, to awaken, to stand in my authenticity, to demonstrate courage and bravery and to step, stand, stay in my purpose. And hopefully in doing so, inspire others to do the same. So that scripture was very, very helpful for me, sharing it with you in case you are the kind of person who gets nourished by um, spiritual text as you put your life into context. And we are having our annual life audit and strategy session masterclass for 2023. So telling you about that as well, the link is going to be in the description bar below where we go through the life audit uh, tool and system that's inside our planner. It's happening on January 8th, that's Sunday, January 8th at 10 a.m. Jamaica time. And we're going to be going through the life audit system together. So get ready to be honest about yourself, about who you really are, about how your life really is looking and what is required for you to move your life in the next best step, next best direction. So we'll put the link in the description bar for you to be able to register. Uh, it makes sense to have the planner with you so you can order a copy of the planner. Order now, it gets to you well ahead of our January 8th session and you have the tool in front of you to use with us for that guided life audit and strategy masterclass with yours truly on Sunday, January 8th. Looking forward to seeing you on the other side of 2022. I'm believing that 2023 will be a brand new year for you, brand new in terms of your location, no longer being at ground zero, but opting instead to level up, turning 2023 into your best year yet. And I know that if you apply these 10 tools, you will make the most of 2023. It is not an if, it is not a maybe, it is a must. If you haven't already, please remember to like this video, to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our weekly gas up videos here on Good Gas Mondays. Be sure to click the notification bell too because subscribing doesn't mean that you get notified with all the new videos. So you do have to click the notification bell so that you are notified via email, by YouTube, 
every time we drop a brand new video. And of course, comment below and let me know which of the 10 tools you are most excited about using, which of them you may have already used and gotten some uh, results and growth out of it. Let me know in the comments below. If you are at ground zero, let me know in the comments below. If you're ready to level up, let me know in the comments. And of course, share this video with anybody you know is ready to move from ground zero to the next level because life is meant for us to live it on our terms or authentic terms or courageous and brave terms not the timid scared barely there ground zero terms so let's change the contract with ourselves let's change our contract with life and choose to stand up bravely and make the best of the year that's ahead no matter what happened before, no matter what ground zero looks and feels like, these 10 tools help you to get up on your 10 toes and take at least 10 steps forward. So let's get, mo let's get moving. All the best to you for 2023. And remember, you can grab a copy of our planner using the link below. We're also um, online. The website is thesuccessfarm.com slash planner. Lots of love and blessings to you. Thank you so much for watching this video.